We haven't seen certainly any compromises or any sort of access to election equipment uh, across the United States uh, at this point. But our planning factor is looking back at 2016, see what the Russians conducted in terms of spear phishing campaigns and other sorts of attacks at state and local networks, and working to uh, ensure that, that those sorts of events can't happen again. We're not seeing anything anywhere remotely close to 16. Uh, in si when I look back at 16, I think based on the access they had, they had no access to vote, uh, vote tabulation machines, so they couldn't actually technically manipulate the vote. They had access to um, voter registration systems. So from a resilience perspective, if they had the ability to delete voter registration files, a voter, if they'd shown up to vote and they were not on the, the voter roll, they would have been able to request a provisional ballot. Their ballot still would have gone in. It would have been counted as cast. So we're still thinking through that lens of what's the resilience in this system. That's why we are encouraging people to make sure they know what to do on uh, on uh, November 6th. So when you think back to 2016 and the intelligence community assessment, uh, there were three buckets of activity. One was this technical hacking of election infrastructure. The second was the hack and leak against political campaigns. And then the third was this broad information uh, campaigns, these, these disinformation and misinformation campaigns on social media and new media. Uh, that sort of activity has, has uh, persisted. We continue to see Russians and increasingly Iranian and other Chinese actors continue to use social media to influence the American public, to draw, uh, it, it, sow discord and, and, and increase divisiveness. That's something that, that is probably just a, a tool of the trade for them right now. So we continue to see that activity. We're not seeing the activity. 2016 had a long lead up of spear phishing campaigns. This goes into that third bucket of social media manipulation traditional media manipulation. What we're seeing is efforts by the Chinese government to influence the voter, how they perceive policies, and influence uh, the, the decision-making process so that they have political candidates, whether it's uh, in Congress or elsewhere, that are more favorable to uh, trade policies, things like that. Uh, we continue to see that sort of activity. I think the president referenced uh, uh, an ad in the Des Moines Register and the China Daily, while it may meet advertising standards for China uh, for for the Des Moines Register, it still is something that indicates a as it is kind of a hearts and minds campaign by the, by the Chinese.